Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. I understand I can kick off shortly. My name is Toby Astle. I work for Perkin Almer. I'm the Global Market Manager for Cannabis and Hemp. Uh, it's my job to listen to our clients to understand the challenges they're facing in testing cannabis and hemp and uh, hopefully deliver technologies and the support to get better data quality. Um, we're not a testing lab, we're a technology uh, provider. Um, just by a quick show of hands in the room, who is currently testing their own cannabis or outsourcing their cannabis to a third party lab? Anybody in the room? All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna do some science uh, 101 probably in this talk, which is great. Um, I'll probably keep this to be a little shorter than 30 minutes, but my goal here is to show you some of the technologies available to testing labs or quality control labs to help get better data quality in more time efficient manners. And ultimately what you heard Jeff just speak about is um, understand where we can standardize some of the testing. Um, there's a lot of activities out there, but they're not always public. So we've all gathered in LA, um, coming from various continents and parts of the country. Um, as we know, cannabis and hemp is an exciting space for us to all be in. There are no, now global markets available for both, obviously some of them very different to others. But what we've seen is our international team really embrace this and share knowledge uh, to deliver uh, answers faster than before. As a chemist, um, cannabis is one of the most challenging matrices to test. There's no plant that is the same as its neighbor, so that presents challenges in the lab. And now we have seen a huge um, amount of a variety of products derived from cannabis oil and hemp oil, uh, which in itself can pose testing challenges once it gets to the lab. So, our goal is to understand what these uh, product types look like and how they behave differently as they are tested uh, and provide guidance uh, so that we can generate better data so people can make the right decisions, uh, particularly when it comes to administrate medicine. What I'm gonna to talk to you today is very much focused on the laboratory environment, but I think this uh, can be looked at in other uh, areas of the vertical. But what we'll look at today is optimizing the core foundations in a lab to generate good data. And in my eyes, that looks like the three we see here. That's the choice of the soft goods, the reagents and consumables. Not all suppliers are created equal. The instrumentation. Um, some of these assays or state compliance requirements are incredibly um, demanding. You need sensitive equipment and instrumentation. And lastly, Cannabis labs are reaching a maturity where we're seeing thousands of samples being tested a month, and that's generating huge, huge amounts of data. And ultimately, as Jeff just mentioned, that data needs to be made available if needed. Uh, so managing that data in a timely and, and qualified manner is important. And what I'll also say is, particularly as we come out of the pandemic, uh, we've seen a lot of challenges around the staffing or the personnel in labs and there's been a lot of delays ultimately in getting samples processed or data um, produced because the staffing hasn't been available. So what I'd like to add at the end is how we've uh, adopted automation to take some of the burden off the staff uh, and uh, generate quality data in a timely manner. As I mentioned, cannabis is a complex matrix and it's full of fats, chlorophyll, terpenes, cannabinoids, and contaminants like heavy metals and pesticides. Uh, so as a scientist, it's, uh, it's key to really understand what's gonna maybe catch you up in the lab uh, or work with a partner that's already encountered and developed methodologies to overcome them. But we know testing is essential. And depending on what market you're focused on or what you're looking into, we know it's key and core to generating a safe product for the consumer, both in the medicinal and in the recreational market. And it's not hard to look at some of the press releases or the media or the data available to show that bad samples are out there. And it's the responsibility of the industry to accept that testing is essential and empower the labs to 
be able to do that uh, effectively. And uh, it's an exciting time for us to, to understand how these regulatory requirements differ uh, and support each uh, of them in the various states and countries. What I will focus on for the next few minutes is the pesticide and mycotoxin testing requirements in cannabis and hemp. And depending on where you're coming from or what you're testing, this is a patchwork of requirements. And as you can see, for pesticides and cannabis in all the markets across the US, they have different regulatory requirements. So. Um, you may think you have it easier in a state that has a lower number of total analytes. However, the detection requirements of those could be quite a lot lower than, say, California. So really, um, a lot of time has to be spent on these methods. And as a new lab, that's not ideal. You want to be generating COAs. So we've taken that responsibility on and developed these methodologies fit for purpose for these various state markets. And we'll focus on California because it does still to this day have one of the most comprehensive lists in the industry. But before we get to the instrumentation, I just want to take a step back. Uh, we have a number of discussions in the field where ultimately the data isn't what the lab or the client expected. And what this means is there needs to be a robust quality control or compliance um, framework in that lab to understand where potentially an error was introduced. And this isn't, for any, not, this isn't just for cannabis labs, this is for all labs in general. And what we can see is that a huge amount of time is associated with preparing the sample for the analysis. And this is where we see a lot of cumbersome steps typically done by inexperienced personnel. And a small slip at the beginning can have a significant impact on the final data result. So what we've done is looked at this workflow, taken one of the most challenging assays to date, which is pesticide analysis, and tried to improve the lab's chances of success by bringing technology to their lab. And if we look at the incumbent or the legacy scenario for sample preparation, what we see as the norm is labs having to utilize a large number of suppliers to meet their soft goods needs. They need to source reagents, consumables, labware from multiple vendors, and then they also have to spend considerable time on the bench preparing, mixing, diluting, transcribing, recording, inventory, and this, for a busy lab, can take up a significant amount of time. So we saw this paradigm and wanted to change it. And what we were able to do is put all those steps into one kit, take a lot of the heavy lifting and the, the wet chemistry that's typically done um, in that sample preparation procedure, and do that at the factory. So that now we can supply an ISO, so it's a certified reference material reagent kit to cannabis labs, so they have more confidence in the calibration and the quality control standards they're going to use for the final uh, determination. And we've seen a lot of interest in making lives easier and starting with the reagents, which are instrument agnostic, has been, it's been a great step forward for us. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about this uh, offline at the booth after my talk. But what I'll say is we've tried to aggregate all the pesticide and mycotoxin um, requirements in this one kit for the US. And currently, we have 77 pesticides and five mycotoxins down to one parts per billion, all the way up to 250 parts per billion. So if you look at your state requirements and see that it includes uh, all or some of these pesticides, you know you can use this kit out of the box with really no prep time to improve your data quality uh, and improve your lab efficiencies. We also have included um, internal standards. And for those that maybe aren't as familiar, because of the challenging matrix cannabis is, we often use a number of analytical techniques to improve the data quality or understand where we'll see suppression effects from the matrix. And one of those that we suggest and recommend is the use of internal standards, which are similar molecules, but they are isotopically labeled. So they're a little bit heavier in their mass. So you can identify them more specifically in the assay and account for any fluctuations in that test. 
And again, this is ready to use out of the box. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see the feedback from various labs that have struggled in the past in getting their reagent prep correct. Not, not, no lab is equal. However, we've summarized uh, the time savings from a kit like this, and you see uh, up to 90 plus minutes of time savings. So in a busy lab environment running 500 samples a week, um, this ends up uh, helping them out a lot and getting through to the more important steps like data review or COA confirmation. And together with our instrumentation, we're excited to provide the complete workflow. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the instrument per se, but we have established these verified methods that work side by side with the, the reagents and the hardware to meet the, the testing needs in cannabis and hemp. And uh, we're very confident in the method and, and wanna be able to demonstrate that where possible. Um, we participate in the Emerald Proficiency Test uh, yearly uh, and last year received our 2021 badge for this assay in, in, its, in particular. So what I was mentioning earlier is that we're seeing uh, a maturity and the volumes across the US and in Canada um, get to be quite sizable for labs trying to handle thousands of samples per month. Uh, having cannabis being deemed essential during the pandemic has only increased the number of samples that have needed to be tested. Um, so it, it's an exciting time to be a scientist in this space uh, as every day new samples, new product types are being manufactured and sold and they have to be tested appropriately. But we saw this as being a challenge because as I mentioned, uh, during the pandemic in particular, labs were struggling to find the right personnel or the right amount of personnel and they were really looking to leverage anything to get them ahead of the sample preparation uh, challenges they were seeing. Perkin Elmer is a big company. We do a lot of work in the diagnostics clinical side of um, the world, and we were able to leverage a very mature automation platform and develop something specific for cannabis labs. So I've been working with labs and the team for the last year and a half, and I'm very excited to be able to provide a fully autonomous uh, workflow to cannabis labs now. So before where they may have had two, three, four people preparing samples, preparing reagents, that could be now replaced by uh, a machine, an instrument, um, and I'll, I'll share some slides on what it does shortly. But we know that if we can take some of the human influence or human error out of the workflow, the data quality is likely gonna go up uh, and it's gonna be far more consistent. The instrument doesn't get hung over, it doesn't get tired, it does the same thing every day, day in and day out. Uh, and this development, we believe, is gonna be important for the sustainability of cannabis and hemp testing. But we wanted to make sure we weren't just uh, tackling the hard goods. So we have the instrumentation now, we have the automation, but that data is essential um, in maintaining the credibility of that result and also communicating that data to uh, the client or, or the lab manager. Uh, so we looked at this holistically uh, and realized we needed to develop software to communicate um, digitally between each platform in the workflow. And that starts with weighing the sample on the balance. You'll talk to a number of labs where they'll tell, tell you that, oh yeah, we wrote down the wrong weight. And that has a massive cascade into the quality of the data at the end. So to now take the data off that balance um, automatically at, with the right value uh, offers a lot more security in that lab workflow. And just to summarize what the platform does, um, if you've been around a cannabis testing lab for pesticide and mycotoxins, you will have seen samples be homogenized, uh, extracted, centrifuged, vortexed, filtered, diluted, all very manual steps up until now, but they can now be accommodated on this platform. Uh, and the idea is you put your flower sample in at the beginning, press go, and you come back and take your small LCMS file off at the end and run the quantitation after that. Uh, and our turnaround time is about 48 samples in two hours. So um, we're very, um, happy uh, as we're seeing that being a lot faster than what it typically takes labs to prepare that amount manually. And just a quick snapshot on the data. Uh, this is just showing the reproducibility of, of the automation. Uh, it's far more consistent than a human, uh, which, which gives us the confidence to meet some of the stringent state regulatory requirements uh, that are in place for cannabis and hemp testing. And again, we know that every state has a different testing requirement, so it was important for us to make sure you're running the technology on the right application to meet the right requirements. 
This is just a summary of the various states and some of the differences in their action limits. Some are higher, some are lower, but uh, collectively we can support all these as needed in your market. And this is just an eye chart, but this gives you the data for the California list, um, showing that we can successfully use an automation platform to meet the DCC's requirements in a busy lab. And I focused on pesticide and mycotoxins, but we appreciate that a busy cannabis and hemp lab is gonna have a number of workflows or testing assays that could also be automated. Um, we have had a lot of success looking at the molecular qPCR prep using a similar platform as I just mentioned. Uh, we can work with uh, the kit providers like medicinal genomics uh, and the qPCR instrumentation providers to integrate that automation into the software as well. Um, for myself, on the platform I just showed, um, we are automating the pesticide and mycotoxin and now the potency prep uh, shortly this summer. So giving labs a lot more um, options into improving their, their throughput and their workflows uh, with technology. And lastly, I just want to touch on software. Um, those that went to grad school or those that have been around labs recognize lab notebooks being stacked to the ceilings. And we know that in a compliance environment, that's not ideal or really um, allowed. So we took a lot of the work we've done in the pharma and the food and the nutraceutical space and looked at the frameworks for ISO GMP um, compliant environments that are now being required in certain cannabis markets, uh, ISO being the more uh, predominant one in the US, GMP being very uh, common now in Canada. But we were able to use that framework and apply it to the state's specifics of cannabis and hemp uh, to deliver a software that now manages and controls access to that data. This is a, a software as a service from Perkin Armour. So this is a cloud-based software that really starts at the beginning where you can take your order entry, look at your inventory, your samples you need to process that day, and then follow that data completely through the workflow to the final certificate of analysis. And we've looked at the entire regulatory requirements, uh, which is typically four or five chemistry assays, um, one microbial assay, and then foreign matter, moisture, uh, and included those workflows in the software. So you may or may not have instrument already. Um, if you do have instrumentation already, you can work with the Prokinama software to improve the data transfer across your lab. And the Certificate of analysis and the reports have been developed to be um, configurable. However, we started with our best attempt at looking at that specific state requirement, looking at the font size, the colors that have to be used so that you are um, going to be in a good position to submit your data for the state um, to, for it to be approved. And lastly, um, we're very excited about the science uh, in cannabis and hemp and helping labs across the globe um, get or um, produce better quality data so that the right decisions could be made for these markets. Uh, and what that looks like from our team is having a dedicated cannabis team that starts at the very beginning on the installation um, of any instrument. Um, we perform a specific cannabis uh, suitability test. So we know that the matrix um, you're trying to test ultimately is the one that um, is being validated by us. Uh, and then we train uh, with a dedicated uh, cannabis application team and. Uh, let you obviously go through the validation process yourself, um, but then you're in a position to, to run client samples and generate COAs. Uh, and people like myself and the extended team are always available uh, to listen, understand challenges or opportunities where we can always work together in the field. If you'd like to learn more, please stop by the booth or check us out on social media. Um, we are global. We have a very strong presence in the US. Uh, I'd love to introduce you to the local Hurricane Armour representative. And for those that like virtual reality, uh, we have a new uh, VR demo lab. Um, it's very uh, cool because you get to pick up the cannabis, uh, walk through the lab, touch the technologies, learn about it, and interact with myself and the team. Uh, and I'm happy to schedule that after this uh, meeting by uh, reaching out to me on my email. Uh, and in summary, um, we're excited to have this portfolio to support cannabis and hemp science. We strongly believe in automation, whether it be hard technology or software, uh, to improve the data quality so that regula regulators, um, uh, medicinal um, discussions can be supported with the right data set. And um, really, no matter where you are, um, if you're in a legal market, we're, we're there to help. 
You can reach me on the email uh, shown here. I'm happy to take one or two questions. As I know, we're tight for time. Uh, and I'll be available at the booth after this for about the next hour. Thank you for your time. Thank you.